the last little bit of stats that I want to give you is about people with neurodivergent conditions. Uh, why might I be interested in that? Well, who bloody knows? So, a recent joint review by the Criminal Justice Inspectorates estimate that around half of those entering prison have some form of neurodivergent condition which impacts their ability to engage. This is much higher than in the outside community, where the working consensus among professionals is that around 15-20% to 20% of individuals have at least one neurodivergent condition. That is insane. 50%. 20% up to 50%. 20% up to 50%. Okay, so that's not quite as bad as the jump for um, people who are black being in prison, but it's much worse than the other ethnicities. I mean, in, in again, in in sort of like ratios, it's not as bad. Yeah. But in yeah. terms of, you know, actual just numbers of people. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty bad, right? It's a difference of thirty percent. Yeah, that is that is crazy. I'd hope that me just reading out these stats is is making you think because, look, I know that reading out stats at the start of a podcast like this, it can be kind of boring, it can be dull, and I try not to do it often. But I think that these statistics are important, and I think they're personally kind of interesting. But I think they're important to understand the sort of critique mm-hmm. that. I have a prison and I hope that you are now thinking about the same things that I'm going to be bringing up throughout this episode. I hope you're like engaging with this and thinking, wait, hold on. There are problems here. Yeah, it's an interesting one because you take things like, for example, racism, for example, which the majority of people accept that racism exists. And then you look at these prisoner statistics broken down by ethnicity and you see this incredibly ridiculous um, sort of uh, correlation between certain ethnic groups and Mm. prisoner population. And you obviously go, okay, so there's something going on in the society, other than if you're drawing, as we used to, a direct correlation between, oh, it's because of the race. That's why that's happening. Obviously, we don't do that. Because darkies do crimes, bro. (laughs) Right. Uh, But you... you, No, no. no. It's in them jeans. It's in (laughs) them jeans. Uh, And so you go, okay, so there's a cause there, right? If if you had a perfect society, if you... you, if you accepted the sort of premise upon which prisons were were mm-hmm. existing, and you don't assume for some gene, some crime gene in in a certain part of the population, then you'd expect to see a roughly like representative sample of people by ethnicity in prison, right? Mm-hmm. That's what you'd expect to see. And you don't draw a correlation based on race to why they're in prison. And so you then go, okay, so there's societal stuff going on. Right, cool, we can do that. But the thing is with the um, with neurodivergent conditions is that you've obviously got a situation where some people are set up to be um, like end up in prison for whatever reason. Oh, yeah. But, and, and I don't mean that in terms of like, right, so then we need to find those people and put them away. What I mean is like um, th- that system is sort of rigged against those people, right? Yeah, to begin I mean, with. And, to, and, and also to show that that's not their fault. They're not doing that on purpose. Or maybe there are other things. Like if, if we're seeing this... Is just putting all these people in prison the best way forward? Is there something else we can do? These are the th- kind yes, of things exactly. that, yeah. that I would hope people would start to think about. This is what I was referencing at the start. Like, we have this information. The data is here. Yeah. What are we doing about it? And what I mean by that is just that a portion, and I'm sure we'll get onto this, Corey, but a portion of the purpose of prisons is supposed to be a deterrent, right? Yeah. It's supposed to be a deterrent. In which case, the deterrent's not working. You're so right, okay? And, I mean, that is sort of, you know, the 20% up to uh, 50% of neurodivergent people. Um, around 3 in 10 people, 29%, who chose to participate in education in prison were identified as having a learning disability or difficulty following assessment in 2019 um, to 2020. Uh, and despite this, uh, the offender assessment system um, only records 924 or 1% as having a learning disability. So if you look at this, three in 10 people who chose to participate in education in prison were identified as having a learning disability, but only 1% of all prisoners um, are recorded as having a learning disability. So what what could either be happening here is, <laughs> is that the people who choose to participate in education in prison, uh, there's just more of them that have learning disabilities. Or uh, perhaps learning disabilities are underdiagnosed in prison- oh prisoners. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. So... As in they're underdiagnosed by people, so people have have learning difficulties that are undiagnosed in the real world. That aren't, that, yeah, that aren't registered um, 
and like you know it's not registered and so in, they're then not getting help for it they're not able to like oh my gosh that's yeah. dreadful i don't know if it could be registered in the real world and just not on the prison system yeah yeah, yeah I, but I, then I, they're I, not accounting for it and exactly they may not have taken it into account in their trial like all sorts of things yeah and i'm just reading all this verbatim because mm. i mean like it's, it's information it's just the easiest way to get it across right um a study has estimated that a quarter of people in prison have attention deficit hyperactivity disorder adhd around one in ten have so it's nine percent have an autism spectrum disorder and around one in ten nine percent have an intellectual disability 10 percent of people in prison an estimate uh, an estimate from this study um 10 percent of pre- people in prison are autistic or 10 percent of people in prison have a learning disability or 25 percent of people in prison have adhd which like 20 we've discussed this the population of people that have adhd is maybe about 5 to 10 15 ish percent depending on how you read it's underdiagnosed it's hard to gauge but like maybe five ish percent right let's say five percent 25 percent of people in prison have adhd adhd a condition that makes it difficult to not be impulsive it makes it difficult to um follow uh follow instructions it makes it difficult to not fall into patterns of addiction to self-medicate. All of these things that are criminalized, right? Not following instructions properly will like, is criminalized. Literally causing a public disturbance, like, you know, like an autistic person might do if they're having a meltdown. Or, you know, someone with learning disabilities might do if, you know, if, if whatever uh, condition or disorder they have kind of um, impacts their behavior in that way. Or someone with ADHD might do because they are understimulated and have, like, not enough impulse control. If you're in public and you cause a public disturbance, do you know what can happen there? You can go to bloody prison because because do you know what as a crime is is is, is breach of the peace i also is imagine... antisocial is antisocial like like literally being antisocial is a is like is not allowed it, it is a crime it is illegal right like being like doing an antisocial thing you can get in trouble for that you mm. can literally go to I also imagine they're probably going to be more harshly treated by jurors as well because they're not going to present as typical or right? likable or, or likable yeah. or yeah they might seem sort of un, un, unpersonable or they might seem just sort of strange or erratic or and a, 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 nor, a bunch of normies are going to look at that and go danger 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 put it in a box dude we have we have data that suggests or shows that holistic people people who aren't autistic yeah. um kind of automatically almost instinctively kind of dislike autistic people sometimes mm. well because you know they don't understand them they can't map a sort of mental model yeah. onto them but even knowing that and autistic. then they just get like cognitive dissonance and go oh get away to some degree it makes sense right if i'm looking at someone who isn't like engaging with me with yeah, the yeah. normal sort of facial cues that, I, that i'd be used to something's off and yeah. my brain is gonna is tell me is gonna tell me that um now when i'm you know like usually nowadays i'm like okay well this person might be autistic like mm. bear that in mind. and then it's not mm. it's not a thing but like if someone isn't picking up on cues or isn't giving out or is giving off sort of social cues that they're not intending or mm. isn't giving off social cues where you would might expect them you know it, like it's going to it's going to mess yeah. with how you're viewing that person and hey uh, maybe maybe that maybe maybe that's something we should take into account um but the ADHD one really gets me because dude drug offenses if like people with ADHD are prone to addiction man like drug event, you're just gonna go to jail. Especially like, if they're undiagnosed, they're exactly. gonna found something that makes their life just a little bit better, yeah. a little bit easier. Um, as a, and it's not really the medication they would be best to be on, yeah. but they can get it themselves. They, they, you know, think a lot of people I know with ADHD smoke a bunch of weed. Oh yeah, and it's it's it doesn't really fix it, but it makes their life more bearable. I know <sighs> people that like you know they'll drink a ton of caffeine, they'll do harder uppers, they'll yeah, smoke uh, yeah. cigarettes. A- ADHD medication is speed. Yeah, so like they're gonna go. Imagine they discover speed and they go, oh my god, I feel like a normal person. Man, I'm on four. I'm gonna do speed like, now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on four ritalin, ritalin a day. I take stimulants <laughs> daily. Like I don't, I don't like not sure. being on them because I, I can't. You know, um, it, it just makes life that bit easier, you yeah, know? Yeah. Um, and yet, if you have unmedicated and undiagnosed ADHD on top of the impulsivity and whatnot, there is, there is ir- irritability um, and, you know, um, not necessarily violence, but like, you know, um, sort of being a little bit more volatile, which and, could just lead you to ending up in prison. And could lose, at the, at the sort of lower end, could lose you to, cause you to lose your job. Yeah. And then that causes you to be in desperate need of money mm. and you need to like steal something or that, <sighs> that kind of thing. it's a spiral that you know you're much more likely to fall down as yeah. somebody with ADHD absolutely absolutely um and if we look at if we look at some more of this i mean you could see that the um the equality and human rights commission they published a report um into inclusive justice uh and they found that um three out of four criminal justice professionals surveyed in england and wales said that defendants impairments were sometimes or always missed so they asked um they asked criminal justice professionals in England and Wales, and three quarters of them, or three out of four, uh, 
said that defendants' impairments were sometimes or always missed. Do you know what happens if, some, if for example, you have a jury that's going to try a an autistic person? Mm-hmm. Is there any sort of coaching to that jury no about idea. like this is how yeah that would be I've no idea. good to know or like be I really hope that exists like this is, so. this is the kind of thing that you might observe it doesn't mean anything it just means like they're different to you but then it may exist but then it also might not be universally applied or applied um you know to like, there's people who are going to be undiagnosed there's people who um could be diagnosed but it, the, the, you know these things might not apply to who like mm. the, it's not just in the concept of the, the system it's also the implementation do you know what i mean so it's not just the concept of these i guess accommodations but the implementation is incredibly mm. important and honestly i don't trust our justice system to implement any of that sort of stuff remotely effectively no but at the very least the lawyers defending the person if they they should be trained in spotting these things and going oh wait this my client has this thing i can get them yeah. a, a diagnosis now but if you look to the us um uh, people they don't have enough time public defenders don't have enough time I, no, I can't no. remember the exact, yeah. the exact number, the exact number, uh, but public defenders have basically no time to work on the cases, the caseload that they've got. Of course, but the, what my point is not that. Uh, my point is that the state should be are incentivized to do this because if, if it's costing us forty thousand pounds a year to keep someone in jail, you want to make sure that you don't put someone in jail who you don't need to put there.